Zermelo set theory sometimes denoted by Z, as set out in an important paper in 1908 by Ernst Zermelo, is the ancestor of modern set theory. It bears certain differences from its descendants, which are not always understood, and are frequently misquoted. This article sets out the original axioms, with the original text translated into English and original numbering. The axioms of Zermelo set theory Zermelo's axioms are stated for a model sum but not necessarily all of whose objects are called sets, and the remaining objects are urelements and do not contain any elements. Zermelo's language implicitly includes a membership relation element of, an equality relation equals if it is not included in the underlying logic, and a unary predicate saying whether an object is a set. Later versions of set theory often assume that all objects are sets so there are no urelements and there is no need for the unary predicate. Axiom I axiom of extensionality axiom der height if every element of a set M is also an element of N and vice versa then M equiv N briefly every set is determined by its elements axiom 2 axiom of elementary sets axiom der elementermengen there exists a set, the null set, that contains no element at all. If A is any object of the domain, there exists a set a containing A and only A as an element. If A and B are any two objects of the domain, there always exists a set a, b containing as elements A and B but no object X distinct from them both." See axiom of pairs. Axiom 3. Axiom of separation axiom der Whenever the propositional function X is definite for all elements of a set M, M possesses a subset M containing as elements precisely those elements X of M for which X is true. Axiom IV. Axiom of the power set axiom der Potensmenge. To every set T there corresponds a set T, the power set of T, that contains as elements precisely all subsets of T. Axiom v axiom of the union axiom der Vereinigung. To every set T there corresponds a set T, the union of T, that contains as elements precisely all elements of the elements of T. Axiom v. Axiom of choice axiom der Oswald. If T is a set whose elements all are sets that are different from and mutually disjoint, its union T includes at least one subset S1 having one and only one element in common with each element of T. Axiom 7. Axiom of infinity axiom de there exists in the domain at least one set Z that contains the null set as an element and is so constituted that to each of its elements A there corresponds a further element of the form A, in other words, that with each of its elements A it also contains the corresponding set A as element. <laughs> Connection with standard set theory The most widely used and accepted set theory is known as ZFC, which consists of zermelo frankel set theory with the addition of the axiom of choice. The links show where the axioms of Zermelo's theory correspond. There is no exact match for «elementary sets». It was later shown that the singleton set could be derived from what is now called «axiom of pairs». If A exists, A and A exist, thus A, A exists. By extensionality a, a equals a, the empty set axiom is already assumed by axiom of infinity, and is now included as part of it. Zermelo's set theory does not include the axioms of replacement and regularity. The axiom of replacement was first published in 1922 by Abraham Frankel and Thoralf Skolem, who had independently discovered that Zermelo's axioms cannot prove the existence of the set Z0, Z1, Z2 where Z0 is the set of natural numbers and Zn plus 1 is the power set of Zn. They both realized that the axiom of replacement is needed to prove this. The following year, John von Neumann pointed out that this axiom is necessary to build his theory of ordinals. The axiom of regularity was stated by von Neumann in 1925. In the modern ZFC system, the propositional function referred to in the axiom of separation is interpreted as any property definable by a first order formula with parameters so the separation axiom is replaced by an axiom scheme the notion of first order formula 
was not known in 1908 when Zermelo published his axiom system, and he later rejected this interpretation as being too restrictive. Zermelo's set theory is usually taken to be a first-order theory with the separation axiom replaced by an axiom scheme with an axiom for each first-order formula. It can also be considered as a theory in second-order logic, where now the separation axiom is just a single axiom. The second-order interpretation of Zermelo set theory is probably closer to Zermelo's own conception of it, and is stronger than the first-order interpretation. In the usual cumulative hierarchy V alpha of ZFC set theory for ordinals alpha, any one of the sets V alpha for alpha a limit ordinal larger than the first infinite ordinal omega, such as v omega 2 forms a model of Zermelo set theory. So the consistency of Zermelo set theory is a theorem of ZFC set theory. Zermelo's axioms do not imply the existence of omega or larger infinite cardinals, as the model V omega 2 does not contain such cardinals. Cardinals have to be defined differently in Zermelo set theory, as the usual definition of cardinals and ordinals does not work very well. With the usual definition, it is not even possible to prove the existence of the ordinal omega 2. The axiom of infinity is usually now modified to assert the existence of the first infinite von Neumann ordinal. Omega display style omega the original zermelo axioms cannot prove the existence of this set nor can the modified zermelo axioms prove zermelo's axiom of infinity zermelo's axioms original or modified cannot prove the existence of v omega display style v underscore omega as a set nor of any rank of the cumulative hierarchy of sets with infinite index Zermelo allowed for the existence of Urelements that are not sets and contain no elements, these are now usually omitted from set theories. <laughs> Mac Lane set theory Mac Lane set theory, introduced by Mac Lane, 1986, is Zermelo set theory with the axiom of separation restricted to first order formulas in which every quantifier is bounded. Mac Lane set theory is similar in strength to Topos theory with a natural number object, or to the system in Principia Mathematica. It is strong enough to carry out almost all ordinary mathematics not directly connected with set theory or logic. The aim of Zermelo's paper The introduction states that the very existence of the discipline of set theory seems to be threatened by certain contradictions or antinomies that can be derived from its principles, principles necessarily governing our thinking, it seems, and to which no entirely satisfactory solution has yet been found. Zermelo is, of course, referring to the Russell antinomy. He says he wants to show how the original theory of Georg Cantor and Richard Dedekin can be reduced to a few definitions and seven principles or axioms. He says he has not been able to prove that the axioms are consistent. A non-constructivist argument for their consistency goes as follows. Define V alpha for alpha 1 of the ordinals 0, 1, 2, omega, omega plus 1, omega plus 2, omega 2 as follows, V0 is the empty set. For alpha a successor of the form beta plus 1, V alpha is defined to be the collection of all subsets of V beta. For alpha a limit e omega, omega then V alpha is defined to be the union of V beta for beta. The axiom of separation Zermelo comments that axiom 3 of his system is the one responsible for eliminating the antinomies. It differs from the original definition by Cantor, as follows. Sets cannot be independently defined by any arbitrary logically definable notion. They must be constructed in some way from previously constructed sets. For example, they can be constructed by taking power sets, or they can be separated as subsets of sets already given. This, he says, eliminates contradictory ideas like the set of all sets or the set of all ordinal numbers. He disposes of the Russell paradox by means of this theorem. Every set M display style M possesses at least one subset M 0 display style M underscore 0 that is not an element of M display style M let M 0 display style M underscore 0 
be the subset of m display style m for which by axiom 3 is separated out by the notion x x display style x noten x then m 0 display style m underscore 0 cannot be in m display style m for if m 0 display style m underscore 0 is in m 0 display style m underscore 0 then m 0 display style m underscore 0 contains an element x for which x is in x ie m 0 display style m underscore 0 itself which would contradict the definition of m 0 display style m underscore 0 if m 0 display style m underscore 0 is not in m 0 display style m underscore 0 and assuming m 0 display style m underscore 0 is an element of m then m 0 display style m underscore 0 is an element of m that satisfies the definition x x display style x noten x and so is in m 0 display style m underscore 0 which is a contradiction therefore the assumption that m 0 display style m underscore 0 is in m display style m is wrong proving the theorem hence not all objects of the universal domain b can be elements of one and the same set this disposes of the russell antinomy as far as we are concerned this left the problem of the domain b which seems to refer to something this led to the idea of a proper class Topic Cantor's theorem Zermelo's paper is notable for what may be the first mention of Cantor's theorem explicitly and by name. This appeals strictly to set theoretical notions, and is thus not exactly the same as Cantor's diagonal argument. Cantor's theorem, if m is an arbitrary set, then always m. Zermelo proves this by considering a function phi, m p m. By axiom 3 this defines the following set m m. Topic M M phi M, but no element M of M could correspond to M, i.e., such that phi M M. Otherwise, we can construct a contradiction. One, if M is in M, then by definition M phi M. Topic. M, which is the first part of the contradiction too if M is not in M but in M then by definition M M Phi M which by definition implies that M is in M which is the second part of the contradiction dot so by contradiction M does not exist note the close resemblance of this proof to the way Zermelo disposes of Russell's paradox See also S set theory